Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking a lot about getting the selector object working as far as being able to rotate objects. Some of the things that I discovered along the way took a lot of work. Um, and so actually this video is going to be in two parts. This first part is going to be going over some of the, the trigonometric theory that enabled uh, this um, procedure, this process, this approach, whatever you want to call it, to actually work. And um, I'll discuss with you really quick why this was necessary. Um, so what I originally tried to do is uh, I originally tried to have the, um, the selector and the selector button, uh, the button to be a child object. So whenever I rotated the selector, the button would rotate with it. Rotate with it. Um, I could never get it to work, so I went to the Shiva forums, and it turns out that that is, I don't know if you want to call it a bug or just something that was implemented or whatever, but... Um, when you do a rotation of a HUD object, uh, it doesn't rotate the child objects with it. It just stays there. What's more, it doesn't even rotate coordinate system in that HUD. So if you make a HUD object a container, the child object will use the positioning that's in, inside that container from what I can tell. So if it's a, a square that's contained in, it'll be 0 from, to 100 in both the X and Y, you know, because the HUD works in percentages. So the 0 to 100 will be the, the space within that square. Um, well, if you position an object that's, say, 10, 10, and then you rotate the HUD, that 10, 10 is still in the exact same position on the screen. It doesn't rotate with the, the container object. It's really wacky. Um, so what I ended up having to do was uh, I have to calculate the position of the button um, to begin with, and then using some trig, I have to find the new location whenever the object rotates. So let's jump into some of this trig. Um, it's going to be really light because um, it's been a long time since I've had trig, and so hopefully you guys will be able to follow along pretty easily. Basically what we have here is, um, is a circle, as you can see, and we have a coordinate system. Um, hopefully you, I didn't label it, but hopefully you're um, you know, uh, familiar enough with the Cartesian coordinate system to know that the y-axis is vertical, the x-axis is horizontal. The square that's in the center, this is going to be our, you know, whatever you want to think of um, as the object we're going to rotate, whether it's the selector or the actual in-game object. Um, in my code, I actually use the selector, but it doesn't really matter. The theory is the same. So at zero rotation, the object is going to be facing to the right along the x positive x-axis. Now the idea behind trig um, and how it's useful is that um, Given a circle, there are certain properties that exist, and one of which is that there are certain ratios that will that will happen. Now, um, if you just do with the basic theory of trig, then the circle that we're looking at would have a radius of one. So this little section from the, the origin out to the edge of the circle would be one unit. Um, and so every point along the circle obviously is going to be one unit. So this H, which stands for the hypotenuse, because we're we're making a little triangle here. That would always be one unit. And so if you do that, um, then basically you can get rid of the, the hypotenuse in all of these equations. And so uh, let's take sine theta. Sine theta will just give you the this length of the opposite side. So in trig, we name them opposite and adjacent. So we're talking about the, the angle here, which is theta. Opposite would be this line over here. Adjacent is the line that goes along the x-axis. And so if you're using a unit circle, it's what they call it, where the radius is one, you can get rid of the hypotenuse. And then, so like I said, the opposite side is just, um, you know, is uh, whatever the sine of theta is. And, you know, if I was up on my memory here, I could tell you, hey, the sine of 45 degrees is going to be whatever. And there's certain uh, angles pretty easy to figure out. In real life, we don't deal with unit circles, and so they've adjusted the ratio so that it's the opposite over the hypotenuse if you're dealing with sine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and then tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what this allows us to do, uh, the first thing that we deal with in the game, and I'll show you, is the tangent. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if you can think of this as being, like I said before, the center of the object, and this on the edge of the circle, this is going to be, um, and it's kind of good that I'm putting my cursor here, because in the game, that's going to be exactly what's happening. Um, let's say that the x-axis is the original point 
that we're rotated to, so zero degrees. And let's say my cursor's up here on the screen. Um, well, we want to figure out what angle of rotation we need to be able to get the object to face where my cursor is pointing. Um, we have some pretty easy functions for the rotation using an angle. Um, and so we have to take what we're given and compute the angle. Now what we're given is we know that the position um, of the object is here and in global coordinates, maybe that's like, I don't know, 10, 10, you know, 10 units up, 10, 10 units up. Because um, we're dealing with global, we're not going to deal with local. It's, it's good to show this diagram using the local coordinates so we can kind of get an idea of what's occurring. But this point in actuality is going to be, you know, like I said, something like 10, 10 or whatever. So, and then we have the point up here where my cursor is. We also know that because the event handler for when you move the mouse, one of the things that passes in is the X and Y coordinates on the HUD um, for wherever the cursor is positioned. So if we take the two, uh, let's say we take the X value of this cursor position and we subtract the X value of the origin, that's gonna give us the distance from the origin out to this little dotted line. So that's our X, uh, X distance, or as we said before in trig, we have opposite over adjacent. So this is gonna be our adjacent side um, because here's our, our uh, angle. And so the adjacent means right alongside. And of course this side goes right alongside the, the angle. And then if we come back up here and we say, all right, so we have a certain Y value where our cursor is located. If we subtract the original Y value of the object, then we will get this distance over here, which is y, or we're gonna call this the opposite. And so using these two values that we've just calculated, the x and the y are the opposite over the adjacent, we're gonna come up to our tangent formula. We're gonna plug in opposite over adjacent, and using some basic algebra, we'll be able to figure that out. Tangent, um, separate operation from this theta. So if we wanna find out what theta is, then we do the inverse of tangent to both sides, just simple algebra, and that's what we call the arc tangent. So your calculator can usually do this. Um, there's also a function within Shiva that allows, allows to do that. So if we take the opposite over the adjacent and then we take the arc tangent, that's gonna give us theta. And so now we know what our, our angle of rotation is and we can, we can just plug that into um, the set component rotation for the HUD and we can rotate the object or the HUD object to, that, um, to face that direction. And so that comes in pretty handy. Um, now there's another portion of the code which um, I know the angle of rotation and I know the height. So I know how far, uh, what this line is. What I want to find out is uh, one of these values, well, actually both of them. I want to find out the Y and the X value. So uh, basically what happens is I have my selector on the screen and I have the button sitting out here. When I initialize the game, what I'm gonna do is I take the disk from the center of the object out to the center of where the button is, and that gives me my hypotenuse, so it's basically gonna be this little line right down here, because the button will be like right out here on the edge of the rotation that we wanna do. So that gives us our hypotenuse, and then because we're rotating this um, selector object using this formula that we did before, then when we need to come back and say, okay, now that I've rotated 50 degrees, where do I stick the button? Well, then I can just come up and say, okay, I've got my hypotenuse, I want an, and I have my theta, I need to know what the opposite side is. So using algebra, I'm gonna come up with a formula that says, you know, I multiply both sides times the hypotenuse. I'll get hypotenuse times sine theta equals the opposite, or in this case, the y value. And then we'll do the same thing for cosine multiply the hypotenuse out and get the hypotenuse time the cosine theta is going to equal the adjacent side. So I, I use these two equations in the code um, to get the x distance and the y distance and then I just take the um, position of my object and I add the x distance to it and I add the y distance to it and then I get this point up here and that's where I know where I need to put my button. Um, and so that's how I got a, a way around the fact that you can't use the rotation uh, or you can't rotate child objects is that I, instead of making a child object, I said this is a completely different HUD component and using trig, I'm going to calculate um, where I need to put that object. 
it works out pretty good. Um, I don't know how calc how intensive that is on the CPU. Um, so I don't know if you'd want to be doing a ton of that um, if you had a really busy game. But it works because there's not much going in our, on in our game, especially when we're rotating the object because it's the only thing going on on the screen. Um, now there's there are a couple of gotchas that you have to be aware of um, when you're dealing with um, trigonometry. Um, there's not too much in the way of sine and cosine that we have to deal with, but tangent is where we really want to look. Now, if, if we kind of think about this for a second here, and I should have labeled the graph better, I'm sorry that I didn't. But obviously, um, the x-axis is positive um, from the origin off to the right, and the y-axis is positive from the origin going up. But then obviously, it's negative going to the left and down. And so we have this interesting thing because we're dealing with the opposite over the adjacent. Um, these values can be negative. Um, so, you know, if you happen to be dealing with a rotation that's off here to the left, your x value is going to be negative, and that's going to be your adjacent value. So the adjacent value um, could be negative while the opposite is positive. So that means you have a negative um, number here, and when you take the tangent of that, um, it's not a big deal. You're going to get a, a return value for that. But also consider that when you're down here in this quadrant, the y value is negative and the x value is positive. And so you're going to get, you can end up with the exact same ratio and it'll be negative and you'll get an angle. Well, what happens with tangent is that it, it gives you angle measurements that are to the right of the y axis. So anytime you take your tangent, you're going to be over here in this, this realm. And so if you don't account for that, then when you're doing your rotation, you'll rotate up to the top here and then boom, it drops down to here and rotates back up. You don't get the full circle. Um, and so a quick way to, to resolve that is you notice since it's all the stuff to the right of the Y axis, if we do a simple check to see if our adjacent side is negative, then we can correct that. So you'll see that what I do in my code is um, when I calculate the angle, I also um, go back and check, you know, is the adjacent side negative? If it is, uh, I just go ahead and add 180 degrees to whatever the answer is. Uh, because if I'm in this quadrant, let's say I got 45 degrees. Um, well, down here, since both are negative numbers, then you're going to end up with a positive value. So it could really be, instead of being 45 degrees, it could really be, uh, what is that? I got to think, 225 degrees is what it means. So yeah, if your adjacent side is negative, then we'll add 180 and we'll get a rotation angle that's down in here. So that's about all I had to cover with the trig. Um, I hope that it made sense. Um, I hope I haven't offended too many mathematicians out there with my overly simplified explanations. Um, but I'm just dealing with the basics here, and I, for you know, to be honest, I can't remember a lot of of what goes on. I know that you deal with trig, for, at least I did for like almost an entire semester. You can really get into some nitty-gritty stuff and how this works. But I think this is the simple stuff to remember. Um, what I always was told and how to remember this stuff uh, was a, a simple little mnemonic I learned in, in school, and it was so katoa. So um, so is S-O-H. So sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Ka is C-A-H, or cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. And then TOA is obviously tangent, uh, opposite over adjacent. So I don't remember how long ago I learned this stuff, maybe 15 years ago, but I've always remembered SOKATOA. So whenever I'm dealing with trig, um, I can always remember that, hey, if I'm trying to do the sine of something, it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So hopefully that sticks with you. It's it's full. Um, and I think that when you're dealing with some game development stuff, this may be about as far as you need to go with trig. And so if you can just remember that, that one little mnemonic that's going to help you along the way. So hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to go off and do the second video now in the series to show you how I put all this into the game and how we did it in code. Um, sorry about the long wait, but it really took me a long time to get all this worked out. Um, so I hope it's worth it. I hope this really makes some sense and uh, will be helpful to you. And we'll see you next time.